Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Supply, and this is The Leather Element. If you've got a good question for us, or a good idea for a leather element, drop it in the comment box below. Also, if you want to know when our videos release, just click your notifications. You'll know exactly when these come out. So the Stitch Groover, we get a lot of questions on this. We're going to take a good look at it, because it is absolutely one of my favorite tools. We're going to go into every aspect of a groover, but first and foremost, the primary job here is to literally cut or groove a line parallel to the edge so that we can hand sew. Well, this does two things. First off, it creates a channel that allows our thread to sink down into that channel, thus reducing the risk of it snagging or grabbing over time. Secondly, that gives us a beautiful guide for our chisels so that our stitch line is clean and consistent every time. Now again, we're going to go into every bit of this, but let's start right here. I typically set my groover at an eighth of an inch. This is our guide arm. That's our cutting head. So right here, I'm going to butt the guide arm against the edge of my leather. I'm going to lay the cutting head down on this, and I'm going to pull my hand up about 40 degrees, give or take. We don't even need to add much pressure. The tool does the job. How easy is that, and how consistent is that to our edge? But also, because of that guide arm, we can easily hit all manner of curves. Very nice. Okay, so next step, obviously, chisel. Let's drop this in and see how this looks. First time, last hole. And there we are. Notice how consistent and clean our stitch line is. We don't even have thread in that yet. That's going to look good. All right. So when we receive our groover, it's going to come with a spoon attached as opposed to a cutting head. The cutting head and an Allen wrench comes with this, but the spoon. There are two things I like about this. Well, it's simply a scribe. It's going to give us a much smaller line. So say we don't want a full-blown groove to, to mark for our chisel line, we can go with a very thin line. But what I really like about this, say we've got a larger panel, we're going to do some tooling, stamping, or decoration inside that, and we need a good parallel line. We can take this all the way out to one and a half inches. Now we can scribe a line perfectly parallel to our edge. Okay, let's change this out. I'm going to open this up. I'm going to take out my guide arm. We've got an Allen wrench. comes with it. Let's open that up. Now, on our cutting head, we've got a polished area that tapers down to a small hole. That's our cutting surface. Yeah, there's a good inset. So what I want to do, I'm going to insert everything perpendicular to our screw. So let's lay that in either side, left or right, for the cutting head, because we'll determine that with our guide. Okay, we've got that tightened down. Now, great part here, this is a left or right-handed. So I'm right-handed. I'm going to come in from this side. Let's move that in and tighten that down. Good. All we have to do is flip that arm, and we've got a left-hand groover. We take it out, and we've got a freehand groover. We'll talk more about that. Now, one more point here. I typically will set my groover at an eighth of an inch. Well, now let me back up. I've got multiple groovers in my shop. Well, on this one, I'm going to set this at an eighth of an inch, and I'm going to mark it, because if I'm going to chisel two pieces separately and then marry those together, if I use the groover, this same groover on both pieces, our edge is going to meet perfectly. Okay, over to our main table. I mentioned using our groover freehand. If we want to drop in a decorative stitch line within a project, all we have to do is take our guide arm out. Now we have a freehand groover, but we don't have to go freehand by any means. We can create a template or simply use maybe a French curve. But now, there we go, we are going to have a perfectly consistent stitch line. With these, on our collar, let's drop in our guide. Now, when I'm holding this, cutting head away from me, clockwise tightens. But what I'd like to do, let's take that and tighten just a little bit more. Not enough to damage the tool or strip the threads, but I want to keep that tight because as I move along my edge, I don't want my cutting head to drift out away from my edge. Now, with a groover, primary job, stitch line, absolutely but I use a groove on every edge. You'll notice that it just gives our edge a very finished, very professional look. I like to go with a groover and then an edger. In fact, right here, that was one of our projects. There's our wine rack, and you can see our groove 
stands out, gives us a nice edge. But also, with an antique, when we cut through that top grain, what's going to happen? When we add an antique, it's going to sink down into that groove line. It's really going to make it stand out. I keep a number of groovers in my shop, but I'd like to have at least two. Right here, we've talked about this one. I'm going to set this at an eighth of an inch. I'm going to mark it, and I'm going to leave it there. That's for anything I'm going to hand sew. My second, I'm going to leave this arm longer. We'll talk about that. So now I can get deeper into a project if I need to. But right here, that arm, that can actually be a little bit of a problem. Right here, I've cut that off, and I've sanded that just so it's not a sharp edge. Because right here, if I'm going to put an edge on this, I'm going to hold this down with my finger, and the first thing that's going to happen is I'm going to hit my finger with the guide arm. So if we trim that down, that's not going to happen. But I have to say this, if we do that, it's going to negate the warranty, but absolutely worth it. Last point, typically chromes are not going to work well with a groover, simply because the leather needs a little bit of body to it. In fact, right here, this is our solstice. This is actually a veg tan. It's dyed and top coated. But watch what happens. Even if we're not going to put in a stitch line, if we groove that, that's actually a very nice touch. Right here, same thing. Very good. Yeah, that'll give us actually a nice touch to our edges, even if we're not going to hand sew. That is one tool I just can't do without. It's going to give us a very consistent stitch line, and it's going to dress up our edges. Two things that absolutely add to the look of our projects. I hope this is good information for you. Thanks for taking time to watch The Leather Element. Good luck with your projects.